Hi, I'm Willie Nelson. I'm Bob King. And we're here to talk about biodiesel. One of the greatest assets that we have we're not using is biodiesel. Biodiesel's got a very important place in our future. We've got to support our own community and our own people. And, and the, the exciting thing about biodiesel is that it's at a scale that you could do that. This was the first plant in Oregon. Okay, so the governor is going to open the uh, valve. This started the clock on Oregon uh, going into biodiesel in a big way. There we go, the valve is open. Part of our remit at EPA is to ensure that these biofuels on a life cycle basis are sustainable. There's been a lot of controversy around uh, alternative fuels, and I think from EPA's point of view, right now we feel very strongly that biodiesel definitely reduces pollution, definitely reduces greenhouse gas emissions, definitely is a good sustainable community choice, especially when it's sourcing locally. This is the model that we need to move into the future with. Now we have newer technology, cleaner technology. We can have a major impact on a state and on a community. It's fairly small for a five million gallon a year plant in a fairly small footprint, but it runs 24 hours a day, which is the other change from our previous plant. Well, what really makes this plant unique is how we recover all the unused material. So we're taking all our products, we have all these inputs, and we make products out of everything. We really have no waste material. It's recovering the methanol, which is a significant savings in cost. It's a feed grade or chemical grade crude glycerin comes out of this plant. So we've got a saleable glycerin product and we don't have any wastewater. That was really what we were driving for with this plant. We can make biodiesel from virgin oil, from recycled cooking oil, and that, that needs to happen. That resource needs to be used. Instead of providing your, your waste oil, that go, you're basically giving it away to go into animal feed, uh, this is taking it and putting it into a, a use that really benefits our environment and uh, provides example of you know, kind of a new order of things. This isn't something that you have to do on a big petro refinery level. You can do this on a community scale, and, and we've done it on a community scale. It has to happen. Just by having your plant next to your truck stop next to the interstate, where you have Bob's plant turning it into fuel, piping it a few yards to the truck stop. If we have one of those every two or 300 miles networking across the country, we've saved a whole lot of money. And we've saved a lot of environment problems, the pollution required or involved in transportation. There is a big incentive there to take the pressure off of people who are paying for diesel. Oregon has a great opportunity, so do the rest of the states in the Pacific Northwest, to take a look at looking at alternative fuels, looking at new feedstocks for those alternative fuels, and this plant is, is basically making it happen today. Way to go, Thomas. Congratulations. Our goal from the start has been to create the kind of impact and change that we were frustrated that we weren't seeing uh, in the world before we created the company. This is the future. All diesel sold in this state is going to include at least 2% biodiesel. That is going to be triggered by this plant. And I think that's going to be an incredible accomplishment for the state of Oregon. We've got to get the word out. And education and knowledge is the secret here. And if a lot of people don't know that sustainable local agriculture, fuel, food is the answer to our problem, then we'll continue to import it from 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 miles away, which is ridiculous. Are you ready? Yeah. We are out here. To me, community is the, it, it's everything, it's the answer. When you see the governor and the mayor working with the farmers, the local producers, all your feedstock, whatever it is, it goes hand in hand. It is about community, period. Petroleum has been really easy for a long time. We forgot that at one time we were supplying our own energy. 
energy does need to be decentralized. It needs to come back to the community. These are small economical plants that get supported by the community that the fuel is going into and it's just such a nice thing for a community to say, yes, we make, we make our own energy. Uh, we're driving on it right now.